Hello! Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on YouTube and other servers. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a wine educational channel, which is all about helping you with the world of wine, explaining wine terminology, and moreover, helping those of you going through certain wine qualifications, things like the WSET, for example. So um, if you want to follow along, please put your feet up uh, and maybe grab a glass of something because we're going to go through the world of clarification of the must. This is a mini series. Uh, it's a five part gripping suspense thriller of a mini series looking at all things clarification of white wine making. So this is a part of the white wine making of clarification of the must. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can get in touch with me here at the World of Wine with Jimmy. You could do that by commenting on this video below. Please make sure you click subscribe and you click like as well, or you can get in touch by the social media you see at the bottom of every slide, or by the website, www.winewithjimmy.com. Uh, if you want, you can go across to that website where there's a wonderful world, which is called my e-learning portal. It is a wonderful subscription service to help all of you through your studies. It's advertising free and it has a huge whopping amount of exclusive content just for you studiers, you wine enthusiasts out there. So let's start to look at the world of clarification of the must. So please note that this is clarification before fermentation. So it's clarification of the must. Clarification can also occur after fermentation, but that will be covered in the general winemaking section for post-fermentation clarification. This is clarification of the must. I just needed to clarify that point. I am a father. I'm allowed to make dad jokes. Okay, so let's look at um, some descriptions around what this actually is to begin with. So the aim of clarification is to reduce the amount of suspended solids in the must. And these solids include the classic holy trinity from the grape. So this is grape skin, stem, and also seeds. So that's what we've got here. We're showing you actually a form of clarification, which we'll go through in a future video in this series. Uh, part two, I believe, sedimentation, which is only available on the portal. It's only this part one, which is free. Part two to five is available on the portal. And you'll see there is the solids moving to the bottom of the vat and creating a clarified must at the resultant of it. So that's really our aim of this process. Okay, so what are we aiming for as a winemaker? So winemakers will generally look for the proportion of solids to be around 0.5 to 2% of the total volume of that must. Levels below 1% can only be achieved by using a pectolic enzyme or centrifugation. Uh, and that will be actually covered in part four of this series. Just having a look at the slide before. Uh, so I've mentioned on the slide, we just looked at sedimentation. Centrifugation will actually be covered on part four, just so you know. So, uh, so yes, that is um, what we're looking for in terms of the range of solids in the must. Now, the next little bit here is what about, though, if we have a higher percentage of solids in the must? Some winemakers will choose this option to have somewhere between one to two percent and sometimes even a little higher because it can add texture to the wine, giving a subtle astringency. And that's because of the skin and stem that will add a little bit of tannin to it. Relatively high levels of solids can give a greater a range of aromas as well from the fermentation, 
which could could give greater complexity. However, lower levels of solids are better for retaining the kind of fresh fruitiness in white wines. So really, um, a high level of solids tends to be desirable for premium priced Chardonnay or things like Chenin Blanc, like top line Chenin Blancs from South Africa or the Loire Valley, but would be much less suitable for wines like Vino Verde or Pinot Grigio or Muscadet, for example. OK, so, you know, really quite a good possibility here for more solid contact in the must for less aromatic grape varieties. So what about uh, the negatives? Could we just talk about potential positives there of some higher solid must contact? What about uh, the problems with high solid contact and fermentation? So fermentations with high levels of solids will need careful monitoring so lots of uh, monitoring through uh, through special equipment and uh, manpower as various compounds within the solids and their reactions can lead to off flavors. So, for example, high solid fermentations can give the very intensive reductive compounds, the VSCs you see here, volatile sulfur compounds which at very small levels can be desirable and actually be uh, a complexity within a wine that gives you uh, struck match or flintiness, for example, or smoke. But in higher levels, they can be negative. And that's where you get the kind of rotten vegetable, rotten egg, sulfury components. That's the very much hydrogen sulfide, H2S. There is a picture of something which doesn't tend to look too appealing, a bunch of rotten eggs. So that's a problem potentially of high solid fermentations through a higher proportion of solids in the must. And what about problems of low solid fermentations? So a small amount of solids is actually quite beneficial in the way that it provides nutrients for yeast. And therefore over clarifying the must to make it too clear can actually lead to fermentations that become stuck. They don't have enough nutrients to be carried out. So fermentations with very low levels of solids, so we may talk about commercial Pinot Grigio, for example, will need careful management and also probably the addition of yeast nutrients like diammonium phosphate, DAP. Uh, and that may need to be added. If you want more information on DAP, please look at my video on alcoholic fermentations in the general winemaking section. And there are many, many different options for clarifying grape must, and we're going to cover that in the next four videos. So we're gonna go through it really with sedimentation all the way through to clarifying agents. So all of this part, just here. So that will only be available on my e-learning portal at Wine with Jimmy. If you want to join me for the thrilling, suspenseful ride that it is, please do go along there and subscribe for a lovely volume of exclusive video content. Uh, things like multiple choice questions, short written answer questions, revision sessions, and all those kind of things that all can help you with your studies. I have been Jimmy Smith of this Wine with Jimmy channel. I hope you've enjoyed your stay here. If you do have any of those comments, questions or concerns, get in touch the comments section below this video. Uh, if you do find yourself in London, I have a wine bar, Streatham Wine House. I have wine schools. That's West London Wine School, South London Wine School. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. Goodbye for now.